Hey, it's Dr. Amanda with Straight Smile Solutions, straightsmilesolutions.com, and this video may get people kind of in an uproar. People get really excited about their opinions about elastics. Hey, this is just my opinion. I'm not saying it's the Bible. Um, you need to try this yourself and see what works for you. Just because one orthodontist told you one thing and another one told you another doesn't mean it's wrong or right. So do you need retention with elastic wear is the question. In braces or an Invisalign, two different animals. Uh, the, someone asked me this this week and the answer is, well, it depends. Um, first of all, what are you trying to do with the elastics? There's a ton of different ways to wear elastics and a ton of different reasons to do it wear elastics and a lot of them aren't going to need retention. Actually, most of them probably don't. Um, so let's just briefly go over a few of the main ways. Um, Obviously, let's start with, with the easier ones first. Let's start with um, box elastics and triangle elastics. Those you're going to do earlier in a treatment. Those are to help either um, level like a high canine or level a curve of speed. A cur um, maybe you're putting on anterior bite turbos, an anterior bite plate. This is going to help speed things up. They almost help work like a, no, not like a reverse curve wire, but the same kind of content the context. Um, so we're trying to settle a bite faster. I mean, yes, if you leave the wire in the brackets, fill the slot over time, the wire will do the work. Um, but if you want to speed it up, you can use elastics to speed up the wire at the beginning of treatment. Okay, those definitely don't need retention. Um, those are just moving teeth. Now keep in mind, anytime you use something to extrude, be it an elastic or a wire, um, it's going to move faster to your eye then it actually moves because within a tooth within the bone there's a series of bungee cords that connects tons of them that connects the tooth it's called the pdls the periodontal ligaments to the bone so you're going to see it move but it's just fluid that's in there because it's just a stretch bungee cord the stretch bungee cord has to stimulate the osteoclast and the osteoblast to remodel to change the bone okay and it doesn't always fully change that's just like you know if you rotate teeth that were already rotated. Um, you know, you had some braces on the lower front teeth and then if you take them off, well, they're gonna relapse. Why? Because those bungee cords have memory and slowly they're gonna come back. So it depends on how long your braces were on for, it depends on how long you wore your retainer, it depends on how long ago it's been. If you don't wear your retainer immediately after your braces are off, you're probably gonna go back to exactly where you started. Um, if you slowly don't wear your retainer 10 years later, you might get some relapse, but you won't get it all because the bone has filled in, right? So that's the difference. Okay, now let's talk about what you guys are probably thinking, which is your class two and your class three. If you don't know the difference between class two and class three elastics, you should go into my channel and just put in the keyword elastics and all the content I have on elastics, what size, what strength, what to wear, how to wear them, orientation, it's all in there. Um, and, you know, how often to change them, etc. Class two and class three elastics aren't usually my go-to thing to fix say over over jets which is usually an over jet as a small lower jaw why because the right way to fix something that's broken is to do it right so if your jaw is small well then you don't fix it by leaning teeth and canting the occlusal plane especially if there's a still growing child you grow the jaw why because you get a better airway a better profile so that's you know elastics are going to be my secondary option and even in adults um it, elastics you didn't have a choice 30, 40 years ago, that was the only way really to fix things. I mean, most of the time, if you were in braces, unless you had some type of weird mousetrap or something like that, that was super uncomfortable. So everyone had class two and class three elastics in high school or junior high. It was just normal, right? Hey, how's your elastics today? Hey, how's yours? We'd all check out elastics nowadays. Nah. So then we use Invisalign with MA. There's all kinds of other jumper, you know, appliances. Um, it's just not needed. <laughs> So um, catching things earlier in phase one and, and growing things properly to the right size, right? Um, even class three, if you have a class three bite, no, you shouldn't be wearing elastics. If the child is still growing, you should be doing a face mask and jumping the bite, right? That's just the right thing to do. Grow the upper jaw to the right size. Don't just lean the teeth together to fix the bite. That's not only is it sloppy, but it's cheating in my opinion. But sometimes you're gonna get an adult who has a little bit of a bite issue and they can't grow, right? So. Then it comes down to, do we pull out teeth? Do we do IPR or do we do elastics? That's where I give the adult the option. Or, you know, if we had a patient that, I don't know, refused to have an appliance, well, then we can try elastics, but usually those patients are non-compliant. They're not gonna wear the elastics anyways. So go through all my other elastic content. Remember, elastics have to be worn 24 seven, at least 22 hours a day in order to work. If they're intermittent, it doesn't work anyway, so it takes a very compliant individual to make elastics work. So 
it's it's very rare that you have someone who didn't work out with the other stuff but then works out with elastics so anyways but let's say you randomly did have this really compliant individual who only wanted elastics and they did get correction with their overjet you know a little slight class two correction hooray yay um you know if they didn't want to sequential distillation or anything else that's out there um do you need retention well there's two components to class two correction one is going to be the leaning of the teeth, the canting of the occlusal plane, um, and the closure of any random tiny spaces that were there in the right direction. No, those don't need retention. Once you do that, you do that. I mean, the teeth are going to need retention. You can't not have retainers, but that will take care of that issue. Um, the other component is a bit of a muscle memory that goes into the elastic wear. So not unlike MA or a twin block, it programs you to to kind of slide forward a little bit now you're not fully moving forward like and maybe you don't have a choice you, boom, you're forward you know you can still slide back you can still slide forward you're gonna be talking it's gonna be going back and forward so there's a little bit of muscle memory in there some people think it causes growth but it, it's not strong enough to cause growth and there's there's plenty of plenty of content out there that that proves it does not uh cause the growth of the mandible if you want to look that up you can look up Class two elastics, comma, scholar, comma, growth. And then look at the CEPHs, look at the SNB and the ANB, and their answer is there. I mean, maybe there's one article that says it does, but there's definitely way more that says it doesn't. It doesn't. I've done enough of these cases. And that's fine. That's why if it did, they wouldn't have invented Invisalign with MA, right? So um, if there is some muscle memory in there, that will relapse. And that, so, I mean, if you see like, the actual amount of elastic change you should get with class two should be about a half millimeter a month, and that's if they wore it all the time. So if you see something just out of this world crazy change, then figure most of it's muscle memory. Um, once you discontinue the elastics, it'll it'll relapse. So because it really was never corrected to begin with, it was just all in the the patient's brain. So you don't want to get them disappointed, but because you don't want to just be keeping the condyle out of the the fossa for the rest of their life. That's not good for their TMD. So. All right, hopefully that was helpful. Um, like I said, I don't use elastics that much with my cases. And if you've ever worked with me on a case, you'll rarely see class two or class three elastics. There's a lot of other better ways that are more predictable, give better outcomes and don't relapse. But there's your answer. And I'm sure a lot of you are gonna dislike this video, so bring it on. All right, thanks, just opinion.